Peace, everybody. This is Unplugging. We want to decode a song that is uh, really moving people. And uh, it gave me such a creepy feeling from the very first time that I heard it and heard about it that uh, I knew there was a spell over it and I did not doubt it. But it took some time for my mind to get unclouded and for the Most High to allow for the mystery to be unshrouded behind happy. Now we understand that music is comprised of tones. You have your high tones which represent the higher chakras of the body and in general the high tones will bring you more of a high vibration in general. Uh, now that high vibration can be used to hype you up like for instance in all of the G-Funk records you had a lot of bass of course like you find in rap in general but there was always a high pitched synth line reminiscent of the funky worm which was you know that had a, a really a different vibration altogether but in G-Funk you had this constant which was used to create a particular frame of mind then of course you have the lows which you know in in um, the Jaws theme for instance is used to create a menacing vibration well the song Happy is creating a vibration and a lot of people have succumbed to this particular uh, sonic spell and I call it that because some things was brought to my attention I'm going to share those things that I, I wrote on my pad concerning it brought to me by the Rokha Kodesh but uh, let me just tell you how I first heard about the song and this was some time ago I mean when it first broke before it was even burning up the airwaves and before he went on Oprah and debuted his video uh, I was in the projects and there was a particular individual who came through and they were ranting and raving about oh have y'all heard this song have y'all heard Pharrell's new song oh it just makes me feel oh it just lifts my spirit so much that's my song and it was a little odd to me now you know people say something is they song all the time but just the way that they spoke about the song it really made me curious and made me know that you know after all of the studying that the most I had taken me through concerning the spells on songs it made me know that I needed to look at this song and see if there was a genuine change going on in the music business where perhaps there was going to be a move from negative to positive which of course we all you know uh, optimistically would like to see something like that happen but realistically I felt like okay what are they doing in this song to create that vibration in people and uh, what type of spell is really going on behind it so let's look at a couple of things first of all you know when I when I hear the song and even when I think of the person who first brought it to my attention I think of a certain ecstaticness a certain ecstasy uh, hilarity things that remind me of Woody Woodpecker to be quite honest and his uh, hysterical laughter this person had a laugh similar to that and I thought of how uh, I first saw a person who was off that ecstasy uh, a big a big old uh, uh, roguish looking dude was going off to ecstasy and he was acting so goofy it really was off-putting and odd to me and so when I hear this song there's a goofiness a lunacy spirit or an ecstasy demon that um, I feel behind it but now let's not show and tell let's show and prove first of all when he says I am happy you know what is really being said there and before the Most High gave me the notes on the pad the question came and he says I am happy who is happy what is the origin of the word happy and I knew, well, you know, there's an Egyptian spirit, you know, what I used to call a god or goddess or deity, 
Now I know to be a demon. Called happy. H-A-P-I. But before we get to that, let's look at some other things. Now this is not the first song of its kind. There have been several songs throughout history, and we're going to talk about some notable ones, that have been used to produce this same feeling, which is somewhat of a, uh, a way to put a person in the spirit of denial in rough times, in the midst of uh, darkness and dark times. The, one of the things that the Illuminati and the New World Order likes for us to do is to ignore what's going on around us, to be ignorant and to be in a state uh, like, like a zombie, to be in a mind-controlled spell. You have to be distracted. They distract us with amusement parks, they distract us with sports events, they distract us with false news coverage, they distract us with wars and rumors of wars, but they also distract us with music muse sick and they understand how the different tones the different keys the different sounds produce different emotions the different vibrations that you can play uh, in today's instruments too are especially dubious because unlike this instrument an old piano there's a vibration that goes through the piano once you hit the key After I hit the key, you still heard the ringing, which was a vibration. Many of you who have played on, on uh, synthesized instruments, if you notice, that is one thing that's missing from a synthesized instrument. Now, there are settings that you can set that try to mimic that, but there's nothing like the uh, ringing of a piano after you stop hitting the keys. That's the vibration going through the air, created by natural materials like the wood, the ivory, the strings on the inside, the uh, uh, materials that come from the earth vibrating throughout the atmosphere the natural way feel differently to the body, to the water within the body, to the uh, nerve receptors, to the mind. It feels differently than what you have nowadays coming through sin, the sizers synthetic sound sound without vibration and sound that's not even tuned to the same frequencies as your original instruments or your instruments made of wood uh, brass uh, 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 the, the drum was originally an animal skin draped over a barrel the guitar string was originally cat guts so you have an interesting huh how uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix call his album Voodoo Child and he's known to be to some the baddest guitarist and of course we know cats are instrumental in the world of witches and warlocks for their ability to contact and to see the spirit realm many will say through the eyes okay but uh, obviously with the guitar the original sitar there was something also about the innards of a cat so again, you have the original instruments come from the fallen angels who taught mankind witchcraft right alongside instrumentation, how to put together instruments and how to make them. So nowadays we have a whole new set of instruments that produce what we call music today. And that vibration is so different from what it originally was, we really should uh, look at it as something different. Nowadays, the ability to manipulate the frequency of a so-called instrument is directly related to the mind control or the use of mind control by way of machines today. I did the documentary Spirits in the Machine with that in mind, that there was actually a way to uh, produce a spiritual effect through machinery. They call it the occult industrial complex. There is a correlation between the occult and all industries in the world today because the devil is the prince of this world the god of this age the prince of the power of the air and these sound vibrations go through the air but uh we cannot deny that it's in the music business not 
only in the making of records, but in the making of the instruments that make the records. Okay, now that's been established. So now let's look some more at the happy spirit or the lunacy spirit, the ecstasy demon. I thought about the Three Stooges music. I thought about some of Beethoven's compositions. The lunacy. Dun, 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 that you can feel from some of the compositions. And I thought about the cartoon. Looney Tunes. Crazy Tunes. We know that there was a, a, a West Coast uh, legend who called himself that. Off of Looney Tunes. And Looney, of course, meaning crazy. And if you think about the Three Stooges music, the lunacy behind that music, even, you know, I thought about Latin music one time, and, and you know, no disrespect to my brown brothers, but I thought about the dun 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 and the, the way that that music is designed to make you kind of go crazy and kind of do your, do your own thing and lose control like a room without a roof, which is one of the key lines in Happy. And that line seemed very cryptic and mysterious until you think about <laughs> things from a spiritual matter. As long as I thought about it physically or materially, I could not figure it out. But when I let the Holy Spirit do the walking and do the talking and the thinking, it became very clear. The devil appears to be clever at first, as long as you're trying to figure him out. But to the Holy Spirit, all of his stuff is simple. A room, you are the room, you are a temple. And without a roof or a dome, wise dome is wisdom in reality. So without a dome, so a room without a roof is basically like a mindless individual, pointing us back to the lunacy spirit. Happy, just be happy no matter what. Mixed emotions or double-mindedness, to see the world around you. Now again, this is different than faith which is the evidence of things uh, um, um, hoped for and the, uh, uh, the expectation of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. Faith is different. And then there are some of us who do uh, walk in a sort of denial. And um, that denial, you know, like any denial, will put you in delusion, which will give you illusion. So to ignore your circumstances will make you ignorant. In order to pray a proper prayer, you must recognize what's wrong. So to just say that I'm happy regardless of what's going on is not sufficient uh, to qualify as faith. Faith is, you know, and to even to walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, a blindness to your surroundings is not what that's about. Because it is written that the blind lead the blind, both will end up in a ditch. Jesus says, be, be wise as serpents, gentle as doves. But more importantly, he says, be watchful and pray. Many of us close our eyes when we pray making it difficult for us to see the moves of the enemy around us. It's the same philosophy. And do not think that we're digging too deep here because we have to remember it is chess, not checkers. And the enemy of our soul, the adversary, he, like, like a lion, goes to and forth seeking for whom he may devour. So how can he devour you? If you're caught unawares, if you don't pay attention like you pay a water bill or you pay a cell phone bill if you don't pay you will pay there will be consequences so you have to pay attention it's a sacrifice of attention we don't want to all the time that's why that that is such a, a key expression to pay attention because free speech is too high so you have to give up attention it's a it's a true sacrifice so it's a way to escape having to sacrifice attention and to fall into a sense of ignorance to ignore your circumstances and just be happy no matter what there was a song don't worry be happy 
which was an annoying song also to me. And it's not that I'm against optimism. But much like Chuck D had said at the time, Don't Worry Be Happy was a number one jam. If I said you can slap me right here, he was acknowledging the fact that it was a call to be somewhat airheaded and to ignore one's circumstances. Now, how can I say that? Because we have to look at the nature of the industry, which is another reason why it was kind of silly of me to think for a second that, well, they were letting this song out because they wanted people to have a happy feeling. <laughs> Immediately, alarms should go off when a song comes out called Happy in an industry that we know is dedicated to worshiping Lucifer. Why are you happy? What sort of happiness are you speaking of? Lucifer himself can offer you a particular form of happiness based upon what you define as what makes you happy. Much like what people define as what makes them successful. Drake had the song, I just want to be successful. And for some of the same reasons, some of you could not see anything wrong with that song. Well, what's wrong with being successful? The same ones that would say, well, what's wrong with being happy? Your definitions of these things. First of all, suck, cess is another one of those Masonic compound words and cess as in the cesspool happy we find to be a deity let's just run through that right quick and then we're going to get back to what's on the pad now happy happens to be a deity and this is this is going to trip you out of uh, well a spirit of the water and a spirit of fertility but much more importantly the spirit of, what, what did we talk about in the other videos? Happy is God of denial. God of the Nile, which is where you get denial from. So again, there is, there's, more, there's more evidence. That cracked me upside the head. Did anybody catch that? Happy is the God of denial. So therefore, we, and also depicted as a man with breasts where we're again we're pointing to a denial factor uh, many of the transvestites and uh, some from the LBGT community are in a strong state of denial because you can buy breasts and you can be half man half woman today just as the ancient deities and demons were back in the day and be happy don't worry be happy regardless of what people say be happy it's another form of man do as thou wilt oh we're gonna heavyweight jam happy is an egyptian god of water and fertility water we know represents the spirit and fertility gods and goddesses generally have to deal with sex so it's again we're talking about sex spirit magic believe it i'm not even gonna put a please with it so now happy is the god of denial the god of denial come on and denial equals denial like in don't worry be happy a sense of denial so now let's look at a couple other things. This qualifies it as a mind control song, a song for behavior modification. Really, it sounds like torture to me. It sounds like a forced, a, a, a song used to force you into feeling a certain way when you see the world around you to be another way altogether, which is double-minded or double-think. Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now, uh, interesting enough, Pharrell, who hasn't really had a hit in some time, came on the Oprah show for his release. And we know what Oprah is all about. Uh, 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 and um, she has shown and proved that she is really down with the uh, Let's Deny Jesus team and the New Age Agenda which is a big proponent of 
just throw your cares away not put your cares on the Lord not put your trust in Jesus but that you yourself through your own positive thinking can save yourself and that is again aligned with the happy song which is so annoying when it happy it sounds like a crazed person to me so that's new age and mind control lose control y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here up in here again speaking those things that are not as though they were a, a sense of lunacy a spell by way of notes so now no doubt the devil's music will sound good so we're not denying that the beat don't move you and you know people have to get past that sometimes I'll say these things to people and their reply would be oh but it sounds so good it's as it, it's like me telling you that this uh, chocolate cheesecake is filled with arsenic and you in your reply being oh but it tastes so good well of course the poison is wrapped in something that would be appealing to you or uh, uh, looking at a young lady and saying how fine she is and how you want to have sex with her and then I tell you well but she has AIDS and you oh but she looks so good the way things look the way things taste the way things sound the way things smell when they come from Lucifer you better believe they're not he's not going to make it easy for you to discern through your senses through your five senses which really are one sight sound taste touch smell all are touch to see the light has to touch the retina to hear vibration has to touch the eardrum to smell the aroma has to touch the uh, uh, nerve receptors in the nose to to taste the flavor has to touch the taste buds and so on so uh, we're all blinded by the touch the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye the pride of life also the happy song um, I was just reminded it, it does remind you of songs on the Lion King that were designed to do the same thing get you to forget you know what's going on wasn't that a, a tune or matana mm -hmm. yeah right akuna matana uh -huh. the same type of deal okay so no doubt the devil's music will sound good and the goal to make you lose control or lose your mind you know even in a Rihanna song where the hook was dumb dumb be dumb 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 be dumb okay now you can't forget that halal which is where you get halal luya from was the praise angel and that's what music was used for so when the music is not praising the creator or praising something of the creation it's praising the destructor the destroyer kali why California is so big in the music game and big shout out to, to uh, Lala and to uh, Detroit's finest for uh, their assistance in this but now let's look at some other songs that have this same effect one in particular that came to mind was the good times theme and this is going to be fun it has the exact same mind control design as happy okay except the lyrics are a little more telling and many of us know the lyrics if you just go back through your memory banks you'll find that it's it's in there it's ingrained in your mind like all good mind control uh what was her name the chick that played with lona Janae dubois was she an eastern star like uh, i'm gonna bring something else uh probably tomorrow something on easter and 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 yes and to those that had any question too I believe that the Bible is the word of the true and living God, Ahaya Yahweh, and I can prove to you how that's so, despite what academia and scholars will tell you. We'll have a battle, and at the end of the day, it'll be whether you believe in the academics who belong to fraternities and sororities, masons and eastern stars who are sworn to lie to us, or whether you believe in what believers and the prophets and the scribes who wrote scriptures had to say 
those who are inspired by the true and living God to write and put his word forever in script to where no man could change it. If it was the word of God, how could man in his finite understanding change the words of an infinite being? That's a little 3G. And we on 4Gs nowadays, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be a game goofy goofy. So good times. Anytime you need a payment. Well, that implies bills and bill collectors. That's not good times. Good times, anytime you need a friend. Now, that was the only one. Because again, any good lie has to have some aspect of the truth. So that, that got you going. But uh, uh, keeping your head above water, making a way when you can't, uh, easy prey to rip off. Some say, and then others say, easy credit ripoff. That's what I always thought it was. Either way, a ripoff. Good times. You know, uh, struggling and surviving. Good times. Temporary layoff. Good times. You know, hanging in a chow line. Good times. Ain't we lucky we got them. Interesting. Because as, you know, good times came to mind, well, them was not good times. But yet the song was to plant in your mind, uh, just forget about those things. The same way is happy, the same way is don't worry, be happy, the same way is Akuna Matana. This, these songs, and, and, and the Looney Tunes songs, these songs are designed to make you lose control. You know, uh, even Eminem had to lose, lose yourself, you know, to lose yourself, to lose control of yourself, to not be focused, to be unable to see your surroundings around you for what they are, so that maybe you can pray your way out. If you pray, you'll stay. If you fast, you'll last. Instead of that, you're presented with just be happy. You know, I'm happy. And then the other good times. The good times by, uh, was it Lishik? Which is where they sampled. Well, let's go back. The good times from Lishik was, uh, these are the good times. Leave your cares behind. So just forget what's going on and just dance. And that's what many people did in the disco era. Many songs in the disco era was about just that. In the 70s, you had a lot, you know, in the earlier 70s, prior to the drum machine, the syncopated boom, 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 which disco is built off of. Also, subsequently, techno music was built off of that. Hip-hop music was off, also built off of a sampled drum or a constant, uh, uh, well, before they were sampling drums per se, they were using drum machines, which is the exact same pattern. Whereas a drummer playing cannot play the exact same pattern. It may sound like exactly the same pattern to you. They may be able to hit the same thing a few times, but I've had a, you know, I've sampled many times and you'll sample you set the metronome up. The metronome is the mechanical tick, 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 tick. And at first, it was hard for a lot of people to match their samples up to the tick, tick, tick. Because the sample was of, say, James Brown or Shaka Khan or, or Le Chic, Good Times. And so when you sampled a piece of that, you're sampling a piece of somebody playing live. And they're not going to the tick. To, they're playing to what's inside of them. They're playing with 10 other people's instrumentations around them. They're keeping a beat in a supernatural manner with a group of others or by themselves. And there's no tick, tick, tick that they're going by. That mechanical time is a false time. But it's essential to tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock hypnosis. So you find this in techno music where uh, not only was Good Times the basis for one of the biggest radio songs that helped to break rap music, Rapper's Delight. And how come they never got sued for that? There was some compliance there because they were all under Lucifer's system to try to create mind control and uh, a hypnotic state throughout the musical universe. 
you know, across the board to all manner of fans. You know, the younger with the rap, you know, with the rapper's delight, the older, you know, my mom and them generation with good times. But let's go back to disco. Disco. Why was it called disco? Disco Neptune. From the source. And that just, that, that's the Holy Spirit, the Thank you, Abba Yah. Guide my tongue, guide my heart, guide my mind to be aligned with your will. Let me be invisible and let you be visible. The disconnect, to disconnect you from the true source of rhythm and to put you on a timing that was mechanically controlled. Well, who came up with the machines? So let's fast forward now. You got Planet Rock. You got uh, Play at Your Own Wrist. You got Looking for the Perfect Beat. So many of these songs were based off of craft work beats. Craft work made trans, Euro, Express, and numbers. I shy, shy, she, 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 but like. And these songs were all computer generated sounds. And it sounded new and fresh. I remember numbers would come on. I thought numbers was one of the freshest things I ever heard. But numbers was, you know, and, and all of Kraftwerk's music was all a part of this big hypnotic move, this move into hypnotic music, taking disco to the next level. Because in the beginning, this disco was a real drummer playing that boom chick boom chick boom chick boom chick which was the hypnotic drum, as opposed to in the 70s, you know, drummer doing it, the beat got simple and hypnotic for disco to disconnect you and around the time that Kraftwerk came in which was a German band and Kraft as in witchcraft or black craft and work Alistair Crowley called his spells and rituals he called them workings okay and uh, in, in German that's a way to apply machinery so it's witchcraft by way of machinery, craft work, right in the name. Even on the album cover, uh, some some have shown and proved. Look up the album cover, do your homework. I'm bringing you what I got, and then you add on what you can. Do your homework. The album cover, you turned it upside down. It was three sixes. But craft work was a German group, and what do we know about Germany and their role in NASA or MK Ultra? Germany was the lead scientist that uh, produced NASA, were also the lead scientist that Project Paperclip brought here for MK Ultra. Project Paperclip was once we once the war was won, quote unquote, or once the appearance of the war was won by America, once that took place, that orchestrated thing took place, then next was, oh well, we don't want the German scientists to just go anywhere. We're scared that Russia's gonna get them. So we're going to kind of secretly bring them over here. And there was a project, it's a well-documented project called Project Paperclip, where they did that. And uh, Dr. Mengele and uh, uh, Dr. Joseph Mengele and the others, uh, Werner von Braun and different ones, some were involved in the rocket program, uh, Dr. Oppenheimer. And then some of them also crossed over and did both the rocket ship program, hint, hint, of NASA, and also the MK Ultra program. And they brought the techniques that Hitler had perfected in occult mind control, occult based mind control. They brought it over here. And craft work were some of the recipients of it. Do some due diligence. Who was Kraftwerk? Does anybody know any of their names? Aside from my man, Tony Grown. I bet you my main man, Tony Grown, I bet you he know their names. But, I, you know, I would be uh, quite shocked if we couldn't connect one of the members of Kraftwerk to one of the scientists uh, or to one of the families of, of the scientists, perhaps one of their sons. Because we know about this uh, exchange of children for success deal or this dedication of the elite to put their children into the program for the next generation to rise up and bring another level of the same thing their fathers did. The sins of the fathers or the iniquity of the fathers 
falling onto the sons to the third and fourth and even fifth generations. We're talking about the Illuminati. So uh, that's what I have for you on on happy, basically. And uh, again, you, you want to look at uh, good times. You want to look at um, both the the uh, TV show theme and the disco song. And you want to look at the use of music in general to create a form of ecstasy, um, which ecstasy was a, a pill used to regulate, they said, uh, uh, mood swings. So we're talking about, uh, and, and depression being the, the main mood swing, a downward swing. So ecstasy was supposed to help bring you up. And so when I hear that song, it really reminds me of something that people would listen to while they was either going off of ecstasy or the new thing, Molly, which is supposed to be a combination of ecstasy and crystal meth. And so uh, beware what you let into your eye gates and your ear gates. Uh, get off a of 3G. Don't be a game goofy goober. And do, uh, do your due diligence. Don't just accept things on the surface. Because again, we're talking about the prince of the power of the air. We're also talking about the fact that he is called by the Messiah, the prince of this world. And he's also called the God of this age. So that means the things that are highly promoted in the world around us should be the things that we look at uh, with a dubious eye. So this has been Unplug Em. Um, again, uh, big, big shout outs to all of the, the viewers. Uh, shout out to my brother, Benny Blanco. You know, you're always 100 with me, man. You know, sorry we had that uh, misunderstanding there. I won't send out any more group texts. And if I send you a, a, a text as a part of a group, do be cautious. If you want to reply to me to make sure that you come out of your texting thing and compose a message, send it just to me because people get misunderstandings. And when you're doing something that the devil don't like, he will help misunderstandings to grow. But again, we have to be wise as serpents and uh, gentle as doves at the same time. And um, also a big shout out to, to my brother, uh, a new song for us, because the new song is indeed for us, as Yah commanded that we sing a new song. And it's that time. So uh, we'll all be getting together. Um, also, uh, B Double, Brett Boyvin, um, uh, Kingdom Kid, and all of the rest. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Precious, uh, you, you know, um, you know, you're my sister, and uh, I'm praying for you all. And so, pray for me, and let's keep our eyes open, and let's stay prayerful. In the mighty name of Yahshua Hamashiach, it is so. Selah.